Prologue Return on Investment I got started flipping houses the hard way. I worked my ass off, got my ass kicked a few times, and then figured out for myself what worked and what didn't. It wasn't the most efficient approach to learning, but I knew what I needed to do to succeed because I had lived it. That's the difference between school learning and street learning. Street learning never lets you forget. Sure, you can read how to ride a bike, or you can get out on the street, crash a few times, and bleed a little bit. After you crash, you definitely know what not to do. Next thing you know, you're riding. That's pretty much how I got started flipping, by crashing a few times, bleeding a little bit, and just doing it. Frankly, I never thought I'd be alive long enough to do this book. In the part of Orange County, on the Los Angeles border where I grew up, the surrounding neighborhoods were influenced by gangs, and more than once, I found myself in situations where I was lucky to come out alive. After I graduated from high school, I started college classes. But college wasn't for me. I felt so lost, so directionless and depressed that I self-medicated with a bottle of vodka plus beer every night for almost a year. Once I established myself in the real estate business and became a top producer, the 2008 Great Recession came along and nearly wiped me out. When I was still in my early 30s, I was diagnosed with two different cancers, and I thought for sure I was a dead man. One cancer? That seemed beatable somehow. But two? No way. I thought my life was over. After I finished my cancer treatments and went through some miserable back surgery, I was ready to put my focus back on my businesses and on Flip or Flop, the hit TV show that had taken my then-wife, Christina, and me to amazing heights. Then, our marriage began to crumble in a very public way. Our breakup and eventual divorce were tabloid headlines for years. When I wasn't on set filming the show, I was hiding from the paparazzi and grieving the end of our marriage. Today, I'm more alive than ever and my health is great. I'm excited about the future and I have more energy than I've ever had. I'm having more fun now managing my three-ring circus of TV shows, investment deals, and training programs than I ever could have imagined. Make no mistake, there's a lot of pressure and I'm still in the spotlight. But if I flop, my flop is going to be seen by millions of people. But no matter what happens, I know I'll figure out the flip. I'll find a way to find the good inside the bad and turn disaster into opportunity. In other words, I'll do what I've been doing all my life, going all in until I find success. It's all about embracing the flip your life mindset, always looking for ways to pivot, to find a path that can take you to the next level, and then taking massive action. It's about looking for that window of opportunity and then running through it. Disappointment and misfortune come to all of us, but I'm convinced that all of us have what it takes to come back. Flipping your life means not just thinking about doing it, but actually doing it. You have to make a commitment to flip your life over and over again. You have to accept the challenge of renovating yourself relentlessly and trying to improve every single day. Many things inspired me to write this book. One of them is a comment I've heard from many people over the years. People say it differently, but the gist is the same. And it sounds something like this. Tarek, you know all these people and you have all these great contacts. You can make a deal happen by picking up the phone. When I hear that, I know this person assumes I was an overnight success and it happened by magic. And I think if you only knew what I've been through, if you only knew my before, not just my after. Here's one example, ironically enough involving my contacts. One of the biggest flops in my life was when I lost my entire list of contacts, my sales book of leads that I had spent months putting together. Losing that sales book destroyed my business and left me with no prospects and no money. I had to flip that situation in a hurry, which, in my case, involved walking across a parking lot in Cerritos, California.